Welcome to the HyperWorks 2023 introduction videos. This video is about storage and organization of entities inside a model. You will see where newly created entities are stored, how to organize entities between collectors, and assign properties to finite elements. HyperMesh stores entities internally in so-called collectors. Each distinct type of entity requires a matching type of collector in which it can be stored. You can imagine collectors like directories in the file system of your computer, with the additional feature that you can save distinct file types only in directories of a matching type. In practical use, you might come across the term collector in the documentation, for example, and see it in the load collectors category in the model browser. Also a property, or a material, can be considered as one collector of the type property or material. The model browser is, in this way, a list of the available collector types present in your model. However, you do not need to think too much about this term. This explanation is mainly for your reference, in case you come across it. Now you know what collector means. Anyway, in the previous videos, you have already used collectors, without being aware of the term. For example, when dealing with components. Components are the collectors that can store both elements and geometry. Remember that you use the icons in front of the components already to turn their respective content on and off. One icon control geometry display, the other element display. Also the shading options for components distinguish between geometry and elements. By the way, when we say that elements and geometry are stored inside a component, it means that if you delete the component, you delete also its contained elements and geometry. This may be what you want. Or maybe not, so I hit Ctrl and Z here. An important functionality of components is their ability to assign properties to the elements they store. This requires simply that you select a property in the entity editor of a component. Take care that the element type in the component matches the property type you assign, so the solver can accept that assignment. Now let us imagine we want to change the thickness of the light red elements from 8 to 12 millimeters. Because the property that assigns these 8 millimeters currently is used only by those and no other elements, the easiest way is to edit the property directly. A quick way to do this is by switching the selector to properties and then double clicking one of the elements with that property. This will open the editor for the property where you can apply the change. You may want to rename the property and the component to reflect the new situation. Now let's create a new property and then assign that new property to existing elements. The task here is to assign for the front plate a thickness of 7 mm using the already existing material. The first step is to create the new property. This can be done through the right click menu in the model browser. In the editor that appears, give the new property a meaningful name. Be sure that the card image matches the element type we want to assign the property to. Select a material and enter the thickness. Now look at the elements we want to assign this new property to. We see that these elements are stored in the same component as the elements of the web of the profile. That means assigning the new property to that component would change not only the thickness of the front plate, but also of the web. To avoid this, we need to organize the elements of the front plate into a new component to which we assign the new property. Creating a new component can be done by right-clicking in the model browser. In the editor that appears, give the new component a meaningful name and select the new property.
To organize the elements into the new component, you may want to navigate to the respective tool in the assembly ribbon. Or you can simply select the elements you want to organize. and then select Organize from the right-click menu. This opens the Organize tool with the respective elements already selected. Here, make sure that the new component is selected as destination. Then confirm the organization operation with the button Next or OK. You see the color of the elements changing to the new component's color which is already a sign of a successful operation. We can quickly check with the color mode thickness that everything worked as expected. Another way to check the property assignment in detail would be to have the selector on elements, then simply double-click an element to show its details in the entity editor. Here you can check that the property ID is set correctly. You can also expand the property to check its details. Let us close this video by looking briefly at loads and get familiar with the term current, which you may see in some browsers. For example, in the component browser, see that the name of the new component you created is written in bold while the others are not. That indicates that this one collector is the current component. That means that new geometry or new elements you are creating may per default be organized into this component. I say may because a few tools have different defaults as to where to store newly created entities. You may set a different component to the status current by selecting it, then choosing make current from the right click menu. Let us see what that may mean for example for loads. From the model browser, open the load collector's browser. See that the load collector force is the current one. Go to the Analyze ribbon and create another force of magnitude 1000 in the Z direction, which is set per default. Then see that the new force is organized in the load collector, force which already contains the previously existing force. You can check that by turning the load collector off and on using the icon in the browser. If you want both forces to act simultaneously in a load step, this is not an issue. However, if both loads should act separately in individual load steps, you would need to store them in separate load collectors. This is because Hypermesh selects loads inside load steps by referencing their load collector. Let us practice this as last step in this video series. In the load collector's browser, create a new load collector and name it 4C. Then go to assembly, organize, and select the newly created force in the first selector. Then select the load collector force C as destination. Hitting the button OK will then organize the selected load so it is in a separate load collector from the other. The next video in the series will show you how to review and edit content of a model. Thanks for watching.